The Battle of Hong Kong 8 to 25 December 1941, also known as the Defense of Hong Kong and the Fall of Hong Kong, was one of the first battles of the Pacific War in World War II. On the same morning as the attack on Pearl Harbor, forces of the Empire of Japan attacked the British Crown Colony of Hong Kong. The attack was in violation of international law as Japan had not declared war against the British Empire. The Hong Kong garrison consisted of British, Indian and Canadian units besides Chinese soldiers and conscripts from both within and outside Hong Kong. Locations which played an important role in setting the pace of military operations during December 1941 include Taipo Road, the Xing Moon Redoubt Trench and Tunnel Complex in the Jin Drinkers Line, Devil's Peak, Ma Lao Tong, Lai Moon, also spelt as Lai Moon or Lei Yu Moon, North Point, Aldrich Bay, Quarry Bay, Xiaokiwen, Saiwan Hill, Wang Nei Chong Gap, Wang Nai Chung Gap, Taitam, Tai Tam Gap and Reservoirs, Shosun Hill and Stanley Fort. Coastal defense batteries including those at Stonecutters Island, Pak Sha Wan, Laiman Fort, Saiwan, Mount Collinson, Mount Parker, Belchers, Mount Davis, Jubilee Hill, Bakara, and Stanley provided artillery support for ground operations till they were put out of action or surrendered. Within a week the defenders abandoned the mainland and less than two weeks later, with their position on the island untenable, the colony had raised the white flag of surrender. Topic background Britain first thought of Japan as a threat with the ending of the Anglo-Japanese alliance in the early 1920s, a threat that increased with the escalation of the Second Sino-Japanese War. On 21 October 1938 the Japanese occupied Canton Guangzhou and Hong Kong was surrounded. British defence studies concluded that Hong Kong would be extremely hard to defend in the event of a Japanese attack, but in the mid-1930s work began on improvements to defences including along the Gin Drinkers Line. By 1940, the British determined to reduce the Hong Kong garrison to only a symbolic size. Air Chief Marshal Sir Robert Brooke Popham, the Commander-in-Chief of the British Far East Command argued that limited reinforcements could allow the garrison to delay a Japanese attack, gaining time elsewhere. Winston Churchill and the general staff named Hong Kong as an outpost and decided against sending more troops. In September 1941, they reversed their decision and argued that additional reinforcements would provide a military deterrent against the Japanese and reassure Chinese leader Chiang Kai-shek that Britain was serious about defending the colony. Source, London Gazette No. 38183 Air Chief Marshal Sir Robert Brooke Popham Dispatch Contemporary research and literature about the Battle of Hong Kong is overbearingly focused on the British and Canadian military, leaving the Chinese and Indian War narratives almost entirely untold. According to the History Manual of the United States Military Academy, Japanese control of Canton, Hainan Island, French Indochina, and Formosa virtually sealed the fate of Hong Kong well before the firing of the first shot. British military in Hong Kong grossly underestimated the capabilities of the Japanese forces and downplayed the Japanese threat as «unpatriotic» and «insubordinate». U.S. Consul Robert Ward, the highest-ranking U.S. official posted to Hong Kong in the period preceding the outbreak of hostilities, offered a first-hand explanation for the rapid collapse of defenses in Hong Kong by saying that the local British community had insufficiently prepared itself or the Chinese populace for war besides highlighting the prejudiced attitudes held by those governing the Crown Colony of Hong Kong. Several of them the British rulers, said frankly that they would rather turn the island over to the Japanese rather than to turn it over to the Chinese by which they meant rather than employ Chinese to defend the colony they would surrender it to the Japanese. According to U.S. Consul Robert Ward, when the real fighting came it was the British soldiery that broke and ran. The Eurasians fought well and so did the Indians but the Kowloon line broke when the Royal Scots gave way. The same thing happened on the mainland. Colonel Reynolds Condon, a U.S. Army assistant military attaché who witnessed the battle and was taken prisoner by the Japanese wrote up his observations on military preparedness before the commencement of hostilities and also the execution of operations thereafter. Topic Indian Army During World War II, soldiers of the Indian Army were involved in the Battle of Hong Kong. The 5 7 Rajput Regiment took up garrison at Hong Kong in June 1937 followed by the 2 14 Punjab in November 1940. Indian troops were also incorporated within several overseas regiments as for example the Hong Kong Singapore Royal Artillery Regiment which had Indian Sikh gunners. Hong Kong Mule Corps was almost entirely staffed by Dagras and Punjabi Muslims. Medical personnel from the Indian Medical Service tended to those injured in combat. 
Ex-servicemen from India serving as security guards in Hong Kong also suffered appallingly huge casualties. Two of the three battalions stationed at the Gin Drinkers Line were from the Indian Army, the 214th Battalion, Punjab Regiment in the centre section and the 57th Battalion, Rajput Regiment in the eastern sector. The 2nd Battalion, Royal Scots were assigned to the western sector. When Mainland Infantry Brigade was ordered to retreat to Hong Kong Island, the Rajputs were tasked with defending the northeast sector and Punjab to the northwest sector including Victoria City, Hong Kong City. Royal Scots were reassigned to the Wan Chai filter beds. Details regarding the involvement of military personnel from the Indian subcontinent in the Battle of Hong Kong has been published in Official History of the Indian Armed Forces in the Second World War, 1939–45. Campaigns in Southeast Asia, 1941–42. Hong Kong, Malaya and Sarawak and Borneo, which draws significantly from the UK War Office reports which appeared in London Gazette No. 38183 Operations in the Far East, from 17 October 1940 to 27 December 1941 Dispatch by Air Chief Marshal Sir Robert Brooke Popham, Commander-in-Chief, Far East and London Gazette No. 38190 Operations in Hong Kong from 8 to 25 December 1941 Dispatch by Major General C. M. Maltby, General Officer Commanding British Troops in China Battalions from both Indian Army regiments from the British Raj earned battle honours for the defence of Hong Kong, 5th Battalion of 7th Rajput Regiment and the 2nd Battalion of 14th Punjab Regiment saw combat during the Japanese assault on Kowloon Peninsula Taipo Road, Xing Moon Redoubt, Ma Lao Tong and Devil's Peak and Hong Kong Island Laiman, North Point, Quarry Bay, Sai Wan, Leighton Hill, Shosun Hill, Brick Hill, Wan Chai, Happy Valley, Wang Nei Chong Gap, Mount Parish. First significant exchanges of fire with troops of the Imperial Japanese Army was through 214th Punjab at 1,500 hours after the invaders had crossed into Laffin's Plain. On 8 December 1941, forward troops of 214th Punjab drew first blood by eliminating a detachment at 1,830 hours and virtually wiped out a Japanese platoon on Taipo Road at 1,930 hours. During the Battle of Hong Kong, the 5-7th Rajputs faced the onslaught of Imperial Japanese Army troops very early on and were the last soldiers to depart from the mainland when Kowloon was evacuated on 13 December 1941. At the beginning of the Pacific War, 5-7th Rajput was tasked with frontline defense of the eastern section of the Gin Drinkers Line on mainland Kowloon Peninsula. Despite being subjected to dive bombing and heavy mortar fire, the Rajput succeeded in holding Devil's Peak on the mainland until ordered to retreat across Laiman Strait to Hong Kong Island. On Hong Kong Island they were assigned to defences located all along the north shoreline. On 18 December 1941, the Imperial Japanese Army launched the invasion of Hong Kong Island by landing first at North Point. The first troops to engage them were the Rajputs who continued to offer resistance until the regiment virtually ceased to exist. In his dispatch, Major General C. M. Maltby, wrote about the conduct of troops under his command in Hong Kong and mentions the 5 7 Rajput Regiment. This battalion fought well on the mainland and their repulse of the enemy attack on Devil's Peak was entirely successful. The full force of the enemy's initial attack on the island fell on this battalion and they fought gallantly until they had suffered heavy casualties 100% of British officers and most senior Indian officers being lost and were run over. The numerical composition and outcome of the two Indian Army regiments 5 7 Rajput and 2 14 Punjab involved in the defence of Hong Kong are published in Major General C. M. Maltby's War Dispatch London Gazette No. 38190 which also notes that many of the wounded of 5 7 Rajput REGT, fell into Japanese hands and have not been recorded. Total battle casualties of Indian other ranks is given to be 1164 out of a total of 3,893 military personnel from India who were garrisoned in Hong Kong. The 5 7 Rajput bore the heaviest casualty losses recorded amongst the six combat regiments during the Battle of Hong Kong, 156 killed in action or died from wounds, 113 missing, and 193 wounded. The 214th Punjab of the Indian Army also bore heavy losses, 55 killed in action or died from wounds, 69 missing, and 161 wounded. 
Topic Hong Kong and Singapore Royal Artillery Hong Kong and Singapore Royal Artillery, which was raised with troops recruited from undivided India, also suffered heavy casualties during the Battle of Hong Kong and are commemorated with names inscribed on panels at the entrance to Sai Wan War Cemetery, 144 killed, 45 missing and 103 wounded. Topic sea Force In late 1941, the British government accepted an offer by the Canadian government to send a battalion of the Royal Rifles of Canada from Quebec and one of the Winnipeg Grenadier from Manitoba and a brigade headquarters 1,975 personnel to reinforce the Hong Kong garrison. Sea Force, as it was known, arrived on 16 November on board the troopship Awadia and the armed merchant cruiser HMCS Prince David. A total of 96 officers, two auxiliary services supervisors and 1,877 other ranks disembarked. Included were two medical officers and two nurses supernumerary to the regimental medical officers, two Canadian Dental Corps officers with assistants, three chaplains and a detachment of the Canadian Postal Corps. A soldier of the Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps RCAMC, had stowed away and was sent back to Canada. Sea Force never received its vehicles as the U.S. merchant ship San Jose carrying them was, at the outbreak of the Pacific War, diverted to Manila, in the Philippine Islands, at the request of the U.S. government. The Royal Rifles had served only in the Dominion of Newfoundland and St. John, New Brunswick, prior to posting to Hong Kong and the Winnipeg Grenadier had been deployed to Jamaica. Few Canadian soldiers had field experience, but were near fully equipped, except for having only two anti-tank rifles and no ammunition for 2-inch and 3-inch mortars or for signal pistols, deficiencies which the British undertook to remedy in Hong Kong, although not at once. <laughs> <laughs> Royal Marines During the Battle of Hong Kong, there were 40 Royal Marines attached in HMS Tamar. When the battle began, the Royal Marines fought against Japanese force in Magazine Gap, alongside with HKVDC and Royal Engineers. Commanding officer, Major Giles Erm instructed his men to defend the island, to the last man and last round. <laughs> Other forces The Chinese military mission to Hong Kong, initiated in 1938, was headed by Rear Admiral Chan Chok and his aide Lieutenant Commander Henry Xu. It had the objective of coordinating Chinese war aims with the British in Hong Kong. Working with the British police, Chok organized pro British agents among the population and rooted out triad factions sympathetic to the Japanese. On Christmas morning, Young informed Chok of his intent to surrender. Chalk intended to break out and was given command of the five remaining motor torpedo boats. Sixty-eight men, including Chalk, Shu, and David Mercer McDougall were successfully evacuated to Murs Bay where they contacted communist guerrillas and were escorted to Weizhou. For this feat Chalk was made an honorary knight commander of the Order of the British Empire. A squad of free French under Captain Jacques Egal happened to be in Hong Kong when the battle broke out and fought alongside the HKVDC at the North Point Power Station. They were all World War I veterans as were the local HKVDC and acquitted themselves well. Topic: <laughs> Battle. Topic: the 8th of December 1941. The Japanese attack began shortly after 8 o'clock on the 8th of December 1941, Hong Kong time, four hours after the attack on Pearl Harbor. Difference in time and date is due to the day shift that occurs because of the international date line. Commanded by Major General Christopher Maltby, British, Canadian, Indian, as well as the local Hong Kong Chinese Regiment, and the Hong Kong Volunteer Defense Corps, resisted the Japanese attack by the Japanese 21st, 23rd and the 38th Regiments Lieutenant General Takashi Sakai, but were outnumbered nearly 4 to 1 Japanese, 52,000, Allied, 14,000 and lacked their opponents' recent combat experience. The colony had no significant air defense. The RAF station at Hong Kong's Kai Tak Airport RAF Kai Tak had only five aeroplanes, two Supermarine Walrus amphibious aircraft and three Vickers Wildebeest torpedo reconnaissance bombers, flown and serviced by seven officers and 108 airmen. An earlier request for a fighter squadron had been rejected and the nearest fully operational RAF base was in Kota Baru, Malaya, nearly 2,250 kilometres away. Hong Kong also lacked adequate naval defences. 
Three destroyers were to withdraw to Singapore Naval Base. Topic: <laughs> Kowloon and New Territories. The Japanese bombed Kai Tak Airport on the 8th of December. Two of the three Wildebeest and the two walruses were destroyed by 12 Japanese bombers. The attack also destroyed several civil aircraft including all but two of the aircraft used by the air unit of the Hong Kong Volunteer Defense Corp. The RAF and air unit personnel from then fought on as ground troops. Two of the Royal Navy's three remaining destroyers were ordered to leave Hong Kong for Singapore. Only one destroyer, HMS Thracian, several gunboats and a flotilla of motor torpedo boats remained. On 8, 9, and 10 December, eight American pilots of the China National Aviation Corporation CNAC and their crews flew 16 sorties between Kai Tak Airport and landing fields in Namying and Chongqing Chunking, the wartime capital of the Republic of China. The crews evacuated 275 persons including Mi Sun Yat-sen, the widow of Sun Yat-sen and the Chinese finance minister Kung Sang-shi. The Commonwealth forces decided against holding the Sham Chun River and instead established three battalions on the Jin Drinkers Line across the hills. The Japanese 38th Infantry Division under the command of Major General Takeshi Sakai quickly forded the Sham Chun River over temporary bridges. Early on 10 December, the 228th Infantry Regiment Colonel Teichi of the 38th Division attacked the Commonwealth defences at the Xing Moon Redoubt defended by the A Company of 2nd Battalion Royal Scots Lieutenant Colonel S. White. The line was breached in five hours and later that day the Royal Scots also withdrew from Golden Hill until D Company of the Royal Scots counter-attacked and recaptured the hill. By 10 o'clock the hill was again taken by the Japanese. This made the situation on the New Territories and Kowloon untenable and the evacuation to Hong Kong Island started on of December, under aerial bombardment and artillery fire. As much as possible, military and harbour facilities were demolished before the withdrawal. By 13 December, the five-sevenths Rajputs of the Indian Army Lieutenant Colonel R. Cadogan Rawlinson, the last Commonwealth troops on the mainland, had retreated to Hong Kong Island. Hong Kong Island Maltby organized the defense of the island, splitting it between an East Brigade and a West Brigade. On 15 December, the Japanese began systematic bombardment of the island's north shore. Two demands for surrender were made on 13 and 17 December. When these were rejected, Japanese forces crossed the harbor on the evening of 18 December and landed on the island's northeast. They suffered only light casualties, although no effective command could be maintained until the dawn came. That night, approximately 20 Commonwealth gunners were executed at the Saiwan Battery despite having surrendered. There was a further massacre of prisoners, this time of medical staff, in the Salesian Mission on Chai Wan Road. In both cases, a few men survived. On the morning of 19 December fierce fighting continued on Hong Kong Island but the Japanese annihilated the headquarters of West Brigade, causing the death of Brigadier John Lawson, the commander of the West Brigade. A British counterattack could not force them from the Wang Nai Chung Gap that secured the passage between the north coast at Causeway Bay and the secluded southern parts of the island. From 20 December, the island became split in two with the British Commonwealth forces still holding out around the Stanley Peninsula and in the west of the island. At the same time, water supplies started to run short as the Japanese captured the island's reservoirs. On the morning of 25 December, Japanese soldiers entered the British Field Hospital at St. Stephen's College and in the St. Stephen's College incident tortured and killed a large number of injured soldiers, along with the medical staff. By the afternoon of 25 December 1941, it was clear that further resistance would be futile and British colonial officials headed by the Governor of Hong Kong, Sir Mark Aitchison Young, surrendered in person at the Japanese headquarters on the third floor of the Peninsula Hong Kong Hotel. This was the first occasion on which a British Crown colony had surrendered to an invading force. British Somaliland fell to the Italians in August 1940 but this was a protectorate, the garrison had held out for 17 days. This day is known in Hong Kong as Black Christmas. Topic: Massacres. Topic: Sai Wan Hill. Perhaps as many as 28 people were massacred after the fight for Sai Wan Hill. 
These men were members of the 5th Anti-Aircraft Battery of the Hong Kong Volunteer Defence Corps HKVDC. Topic: Silesian Mission. At Shao K1 there was a Silesian mission being used as an advanced dressing station. On the night of the 18th of December it was surrounded by troops of the 229th Infantry Regiment. At 7 o'clock on 19 December, Captain Martin Banfill of the Canadian Medical Corps surrendered the station. Two injured officers of the 7th Rajput Regiment were murdered upon arrival in an ambulance. The Japanese separated the male medical staff from the female, two nurses, whose lives were spared. All but three of the men were killed, most of the victims were of the Royal Army Medical Corps but also at least two men of the Royal Rifles of Canada and two civilians. Topic. Causeway Bay Three captured persons were executed at Causeway Bay, including a female air raid warden with the local air raid precautions ARP. Topic. Wang Nai Chung Gap At Wang Nai Chung Gap, ten men of the St. John Ambulance were killed, as well as a policeman and a medic. Topic. Jardines Lookout Four men each of the 3rd Company HKVDC and the Winnipeg Grenadier were massacred after battle at Jardines Lookout. One Grenadier, a private Kilfoyle, was killed on the forced march to North Point, according to witnesses. <laughs> Black Hole of Hong Kong Four men were killed in the so-called Black Hole of Hong Kong. A house on Blue Pool Road, including two Canadian officers. Topic: <inaudible> Blue Pool Road. Around 30 civilians of different ethnicities were massacred at Blue Pool Road. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> The Ridge, Overbays, and Eucliffe. In the worst massacre of POWs of the battle, the Japanese killed at least 47 after taking the ridge. Among the dead was Major Charles Sidney Clark of China Command HQ, two men of the 12th and 20th Coastal Regiments of the Royal Artillery RA, six men of the Royal Army Service Corps RASC, and two of the Royal Canadian Army Service Corps RCASC, 19 men of the Royal Army Ordnance Corps RAOC, and three of the Royal Canadian Ordnance Corps RCOC, and 14 men of the RASC Company of the HKVDC. The Japanese also executed at least 14 captives at Overbase, men of the same units as at the Ridge but also including three Royal Rifles of Canada and an officer of the 1st Battalion, Middlesex Regiment. A further seven were killed at Eucliffe and another 36 known victims cannot be placed precisely at one of the three locations Ridge, Overbase, Eucliffe. Ride, who was present at the surrender, stated later that he saw 50 bodies lying by the road, including six Middlesex men among them. These men may have been some of those attached to the Hong Kong Chinese Regiment. The Commonwealth War Graves Commission report also states that five men of the Royal Air Force went missing near the ridge on 20 December, perhaps captured and killed. <laughs> Deepwater Bay Ride Six men of the Middlesex were killed defending PB-14 at Deepwater Bay Ride Leon Light. It is uncertain whether they were killed in action, or murdered after capture. St. Stephen's College The massacre perpetrated at St. Stephen's College is the least well known. Only 13 victims can be confirmed at the location but reports and estimates put the real number as high as 99. The names of all the reported victims may never be known. Between 75 and 150 bodies were cremated by the victors in the aftermath of the battle but this total includes the victims of the fighting around Stanley Fort, such as the men of 965 Defense Battery. Although it is the most infamous massacre, it has been the hardest to match with records. Three British and four Chinese nurses were said to have been raped and murdered and one Canadian, Captain Overton Stark Hickey of the RCASC, murdered trying to stop the rapes. Besides the raped nurses, the medical staff suffered two deaths, a doctor shot in the head whilst attempting escape and 25 orderlies of the Indian Hospital Corps and St. John Ambulance personnel. 
The 55 St. John victims of the Battle of Hong Kong are memorialized at the present headquarters in Hong Kong but since no dates are given on the memorial it is impossible to identify those killed at St. Stephen's. Four Chinese servants and one civilian, Tam Chung Wen, were killed. Tam is the only Chinese victim of this massacre known by name. Among the soldiers receiving treatment at the college, two riflemen were mutilated and murdered and a further 56 men were reportedly bayoneted in their beds. Some of these men may have been royal rifles whose deaths are incorrectly reported as occurring elsewhere on 26 December. <laughs> Marinal mission At least eight men, six of the Middlesex and two Royal Engineers, were killed after capture at Marinol Mission. Four members of the 8th Coastal Regiment RA may have been killed here as well. Estimates of the number of men murdered vary from 11 to 16. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Brick Hill. 26 prisoners are believed to have been killed after the fighting for Brick Hill but some of these may have died in the fight, including some of the 17 men of the heavy anti-aircraft, Hong Kong and Singapore Royal Artillery HKSRA, known to have died there. Most of the soldiers here murdered were Muslims, including one religious teacher. <laughs> Aftermath Casualties. <laughs> 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 The Japanese had at least 1,895 men killed of an estimated 6,000 casualties. Allied casualties were 1,111 men killed, 1,167 missing and 1,362 wounded. Allied dead, including British, Canadian and Indian soldiers, were eventually interred at Tsai Wan Military Cemetery and the Stanley Military Cemetery. Sea Force casualties in the battle were 23 officers and 267 other ranks killed or died of wounds, including 5 officers and 16 other ranks of the brigade headquarters, 7 officers and 123 men of the Royal Rifles and 11 officers and 128 men of the Winnipeg Grenadier. Sea Force also had 28 officers and 465 men wounded. Some of the dead were murdered by Japanese soldiers during or after surrender. Japanese soldiers committed a number of atrocities on 19 December, when the aid post at the Salesian Mission near Sao Ki Wan was overrun. A total of 1,528 soldiers, mainly Commonwealth, predominantly Indians and Canadians, are either buried or commemorated there. There are also graves of other Allied combatants who died in the region during the war, including some Dutch sailors who were reinterred in Hong Kong after the war. The nearby Sai Wan Battery, with buildings constructed as far back as 1890, housed the depot and record office of the Hong Kong Military Service Corps for nearly four decades after the war. The barracks were handed over to the government in 1985 and were subsequently converted into Lei Yu Moon Park and Holiday Village. At the end of February 1942, the Japanese government stated that numbers of prisoners of war in Hong Kong were, British 5,072, Canadian 1,689, Indian 3,829, others 357, a total of 10,947. They were sent to Sham Shui Po Pao Camp Argyle Street Camp for officers North Point Camp primarily for Canadians and Royal Navy Ma Tao Chung Camp for Indian Soldiers Yokohama Camp in Japan Fukuoka Camp in Japan Osaka Camp in Japanoff The Canadians captured during the battle, 267 subsequently perished in Japanese prisoner of war camps, mainly due to neglect and abuse. In December 2011, Toshiyuku Kato, Japan's parliamentary vice minister for foreign affairs, apologized for the mistreatment to a group of Canadian veterans of the Battle of Hong Kong. Enemy civilians, meaning allied nationals, were interned at the Stanley internment camp. Initially, there were 2400 internees, although this number was reduced by repatriations during the war. Interned persons who died and prisoners executed by the Japanese are buried in Stanley Military Cemetery. Topic. Subsequent operations Isagai Rensuke became the first Japanese governor of Hong Kong. This ushered in the three years and eight months of imperial Japanese administration. 
During the three and a half years of occupation by the Japanese, an estimated 10,000 Hong Kong civilians were executed, while many others were tortured, raped, or mutilated. The local population in the rural New Territories, a mix of Hakka, Cantonese and other Han Chinese groups, waged a guerrilla war with limited success. The resistance groups were known as the Gangju and Dongjong forces. The Japanese raised several villages in reprisal, the guerrillas fought until the end of the Japanese occupation. General Takashi Sakai, who led the invasion of Hong Kong and served as governor for some time, was tried as a war criminal and executed by a firing squad in 1946. Topic. Awards John Robert Osborne, the 2nd of January 1899 to the 19th of December 1941, was awarded the Victoria Cross. After seeing a Japanese grenade roll in through the doorway of the building Osborne and his fellow Canadian Winnipeg grenadier had been garrisoning, he took off his helmet and threw himself on the grenade, saving the lives of over 10 other Canadian soldiers. He was born in Norfolk, England. Gander was a Newfoundland dog posthumously awarded the Dickon Medal, the Animals Victoria Cross, in 2000 for his deeds in World War II, the first such award in over 50 years. He picked up a thrown Japanese hand grenade and rushed with it toward the enemy, dying in the ensuing explosion but saving the lives of several wounded Canadian soldiers. Colonel Lance Newnham, Captain Douglas Ford and Flight Lieutenant Hector Bertram Gray were awarded the George Cross for the gallantry they showed in resisting Japanese torture in the immediate aftermath of the battle. The men had been captured and were in the process of planning a mass escape by British forces. Their plan was discovered but they refused to disclose information under torture and were shot by firing squad. Topic. Commemoration The Cenotaph in Central commemorates the defense as well as war dead from the First World War. The shield in the colonial emblem of Hong Kong granted in 1959, featured the battlement design to commemorate the defense of Hong Kong during the Second World War. This coat of arms was in place until 1997, when it was replaced by the regional emblem. After the war, Lei Yu Moon Fort became a training ground for the British forces until 1987, when it was vacated. In view of its historical significance and unique architectural features, the former Urban Council decided in 1993 to conserve and develop the fort into the Hong Kong Museum of Coastal Defense. The Memorial Garden at Hong Kong City Hall commemorates those who died in Hong Kong during World War II. <laughs> Topic. Orders of battle Imperial Japanese Army 23rd Army, Japan, Lieutenant General T. Sakai, 38th Division, Lieutenant General T. Ito, 228th, 229th, and 230th Infantry Regiments, Araki Detachment, 66th Infantry Regiment, Rearguard, 2nd Independent Anti-Tank Gun Battalion, 5th Independent Anti-Tank Gun Battalion, 10th Independent Mountain Artillery Regiment, 20th Independent Mountain Artillery Battalion, 21st Mortar Battalion, 20th Independent Engineer Regiment, 1 Radio Signal Platoon, 1 3rd of Medical Unit, 51st Division, 1st and 2nd River Crossing Material Company. 9th Division 3 Companies of 3rd Independent Transportation Regiment 19th Independent Transport Company 20th Independent Transport Company 21st Independent Transport Company 17th Field Water Purification and Supply Unit 23rd Army Air Unit 45th Air Regiment Element of 44th Independent Air Unit 2 Formations of 10th Independent Air Squad 47th Air Field Battalion Elements of 67th Air Field Battalion 67th Air Field Company Imperial Japanese Navy 2nd China Expeditionary Fleet British Army Infantry 2nd Battalion, the Royal Scots the Royal Regiment Queen's Own Royal West Kent Regiment 1st Battalion, the Middlesex Regiment Machine Gun Battalion 5th Battalion, 7th Rajput Regiment 2nd Battalion, 14th Punjab Regiment 1st Battalion, the Winnipeg Grenadier the Royal Rifles of Canada Rifle Battalion Hong Kong Chinese Regiment Infantry Battalion Infantry Companies, Hong Kong Volunteer Defence Corps HKVD 
DC Artillery 8th Coast Regiment, Royal Artillery 12th Coast Regiment, Royal Artillery 5th Anti-Air Regiment, Royal Artillery 956th Defense Battery, Royal Artillery 1st Hong Kong Regiment, Hong Kong and Singapore Royal Artillery, Artillery Batteries, Hong Kong Volunteer Defense Corps HKVDC Supporting Units Royal Engineers, RE Royal Army Service Corps, RASC Royal Army Medical Corps, RAMC Royal Signals, RS Royal Army Ordnance Corps, RAOC Royal Army Dental Corps, RADC Royal Army Pay Corps, RAPC Military Provost Staff Corps Indian Hospital Corps, IHC Indian Medical Service, IMS Royal Indian Army Service Corps, RIASC Hong Kong Mule Corps Corps of Military Staff Clerks Canadian Provost Corps Royal Canadian Army Medical Corps, RCAMC Canadian Army Dental Corps Canadian Service Royal Canadian Corps of Signals, RCCS Royal Canadian Army Service Corps Corps, RCASC Royal Canadian Army Pay Corps, RCAPC Canadian Postal Corps Royal Canadian Ordnance Corps, RCOC Canadian Chaplain Service Canadian Auxiliary Services Supporting Units, Hong Kong Volunteer Defence Corps HKVDC, Hong Kong Dockyard Defence Corps HKDDC, under HKVDC Command in Battle of Hong Kong Royal Navy Hong Kong Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve, HKRNVR Royal Marines, ERM HMS Tamar Fleet Air Arm, FAA Queen Alexandra RN Nursing Service Royal Naval Dockyard Police, RNDP HMS Tamar HMS Thracian HMS Thanet HMS Scout HMS Turn HMS Robin. HMS Redstart HMS Sakala HMS Moth Royal Air Force RAF Kai Tok RAF Little Sai Wan RAF Sek Kong RAF Shatan Raf Tai Mo Shan Topic Notes Topic Footnotes Topic Bibliography Topic Further reading Topic External links Hong Kong Veterans Commemorative Association, Canada Hong Kong Category WW2 People's War BBC Official report by Major General C. M. Maltby, GOC. Hong Kong Canadians at Hong Kong The Defense of Hong Kong, December 1941 by Terry Kopp at the Internet Archive PDF archived from the original on 28 May 2008 Report No. 163 Canadian Participation in the Defense of Hong Kong, December, 1941 at the Internet Archive PDF 299 kilobytes archived version as of 24 August 2006 Hong Kong War Diary – Current Research into the Battle Battle of Hong Kong Background and Battlefield Tour Points of Interest by Tony Banham the detailed story of the actual battle and a tribute to Major Maurice A. Parker, C.O. D. Coy, Royal Rifles of Canada, at the Wayback Machine, archived the 28th of October 2009. Philip Doddridge, Memories Uninvited, a fascinating story of a young man who finds himself caught up in the horrific battle for Hong Kong and the years of captivity he lived through after the battle was over on December 25, 1941. Quote.